Okay, hi guys, uh, thanks for coming along today to our uh, live in the chair on Facebook. Uh, Sean, you're very welcome, Fergus, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Cheers for having us, yeah. No problem. Um, just first, uh, hey, first things guys, first. Uh, thanks for coming along. First things first, I'll turn the sound down there. Um, let's talk about the, the end game in Paris, that, that last five minutes. Uh, I mean, incredible, both of you were involved. What's going through your minds in that situation? Sean? Um, I suppose I'd, I'd just come into the rock to try and clean out a few bodies and uh, I was facing forward so um, I just turned around to see where the next play was going and Johnny was looking forward so I just turned around and I could see the ball sailing towards the post and it was just fingers crossed that it was going to make it. Uh, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy finish and next thing there was 14 lads on top of him so uh, yeah, some finish and some kick by, by Johnny. 41 phases in the build-up, Fergus. I mean, you know, the, the level of concentration alone to not to make a mistake, it's phenomenal. Yeah, well, we, we, we go through sometimes three-minute blocks with Joe in attack. Um, he preps us for that, but I think that one was around four. So, um, you know, I think we showed um, great character in, in building those phases together. Um, lads backing each other up, you know, we had to go from that 22 um, drop out after they missed that penalty. And... Um, you could just sense that the, the belief was, was building within you know, the group as we went through the first five, six phases and we just slowly started to get over the gain line and uh, yeah, then just Johnny did, did his thing and we put him in the right position and uh, just great scenes at the end. Uh, it was incredible teamwork, the whole thing, and, and, and great celebration. So, uh, one thing that was picked up on was that uh, was it Earlsey and, and uh, Ian Henderson both followed up the kick. So was there any grief about that from Joe this morning, that they were the only two to follow up the kick? And he's, he's yet to go through the video uh, with us but um, I actually spotted that when I looked over the game and I thought that there could be a couple of lads um, uh, giving out there for that one so we'll see. Very vigilant, very vigilant. <laughs> so they get, they get top of the class, yeah. is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I think I have my bases are covered. I was in the ruck so at least I can rest easy for another hour. I'm sure you'll find something else. Uh, <laughs> I just knew it was going over, so I ran back towards Johnny. You just had faith in Johnny. <laughs> back to me. So you, you had a couple of hours off yesterday afternoon, I think, when you came back from, from Paris and then straight back into camp last night. Was that right? That was right, yeah. We had a couple of hours. So the guys kind of living, um, the Leinster lads living in Dublin, most of us got home. And then the guys uh, from Belfast, uh, you know, Cork and Limerick based lads and Galway lads were... And didn't really probably get home, so um, it was a bit of a sh quick turnaround, but um, that's the way it is, getting over for that French game. Obviously, you stay the two nights, you come back after the game, and um, you know you just got to get back into it. Um, it's it's part of the Six Nations, it's an intense period, but um, we've got to stay in here to get the work done. Uh, you must be incredibly fatigued after a game like that. I mean, the physical, the mental, I mean, how important, uh, Sean, say, for example, is, is just sleeping in, in, the, in the couple of days after a match like that? Or how hard is it to actually sleep that night? Um, yeah, it's pretty tough. And I, I can remember when we were going from uh, the ground to the, the, to the after-match function that you know, it was one of the quietest buses I've ever been on, considering we had such a great win. I think there were a lot of tired bodies, but even that, you're still kind of pumped up and the adrenaline is still, still going that night. It was tough to tough to get a bit of sleep uh you know you're probably really catching up last night and a bit of that and just trying to get that in so you can kind of hit the ground running this week and, and get back into training i know you're a, a an nfl fan so did you get much sleep last night did you stay up for the super bowl you can tell us you're amongst friends uh oh, i just watched the start of it maybe uh, the, uh into the second quarter a bit so uh yeah fantastic game saw the final score this morning um yeah, big interest in it. So it was good to see the, 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 the Eagles get their their first win in a long time. Uh, um, yeah, it's brilliant viewing watching the, the American football. And uh, you managed to, to, to do it despite having to share a room with, uh, was it Keane Healy last night? Uh, no, I was with Keane Healy over in, in, in Paris uh, for a few days, but we lucky enough we get our own our own rooms here. Um, so at least, uh, yeah, I think we probably had enough of each other over the few days. Uh, you know, there's a few interesting rituals uh, Kean does with his, <laughs> his pre-bed sleep and all that. So, uh, um, yeah, it's interesting <laughs> viewing to be with, to be rooming with him. We've seen that at his acupuncture mat and, and all his different things. That, like, in terms of roommates, do you guys ever room together for Ireland or for Leinster? Uh, we room together with, with Leinster more. Um, in here, I've been, been with Dev and been with Kean. Uh, so, yeah, we room together with, in the Leinster away trip, so... Definitely have to bring the, the earplugs and room with Nugget. He's a, he's a bit of a snore. It sounds like there's a, an animal dying beside you at times when he's, yeah. he's snoring so loud. So. Yeah, he Otherwise good, though. Yeah, yeah. I think they tried to they tried to separate us in here a small, but, you know, we're 
We're a dangerous combination. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of best roommate, worst roommates for you, Sean? Um, best would probably be, you know, Deb and Toner goes, you, you were room with him as well, uh, he goes about his business very quietly, yeah. you know, for a big guy, sleeps like an angel. Um, worst would have to be uh, Sean, Sean O'Brien. O'Brien. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, he's just a bit of a space invader, jumps in you in the middle of very the night. Messy. Very messy, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I think a lot of lads try and stay clear of him. So, and, if, and particularly important for you, you've got two young kids at home, you're coming into camp, you're probably just looking forward to getting a decent night's nice sleep, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think I can take too much credit for being run up the walls at home. Uh, my wife takes care of a good bit of that, but uh, yeah, lucky I got home for a few hours to see them yesterday and to relieve Granny and Granddad were looking after him over the weekend because uh, one my parents and, and Claire got to go to the game, so that was great. Um, uh, they didn't seem too, too, uh, too happy to see us coming through the door. So um, yeah, it was good to get a couple of hours with them anyway. Great, great. I mean, that's important, isn't it? That, that the whole family thing. Fergus, you're you're recently married as well. Yeah. You know, having the family happy is kind of it's a very important thing for you guys as players, isn't it? Yeah, big time. I think you know when you're off the field and you're happy, you're you're switching off better, um, and you're covering better. So. Uh, yeah, lucky to, to have um, supportive families behind us anyway. Um, just moving on from that, uh, Sean, a couple of the lads said I had to ask you this because you know, you're know you known for your, your, your speed of foot and your, your, your agility and all of that. They reckon that you would take Fergus in a one-on-one race. Is that Who true? Who said that now? <laughs> Look, the people know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, no, I'd say maybe maybe over 10, 15, I'd be in with a good 15, chance. 15, mad. He, he might take me over might, three metres. He, might catch, he might catch me after 20 when I start to slow down a small bit. <laughs> okay, but the fact, I mean, he could challenge you over a short distance. Oh, he would, yeah. No, it's true. He'd be one of the quickest forwards in the country, in fairness to him. So, so I won't be mocking it. Uh, Fer- like that Fer- as take me in the, he saw us, he had a few bursts there recently in the Leinster game, so he still got the, definitely still got the wheels. Reverse the roles though, I mean, how's your thrown in or scrummaging? Um, well, I think my scrummaging would be quite good. If I got the head tape on already, I'm ready for that. Um, whereas I think my darts, I might struggle with throwing the ball into the line. I might need a couple of lessons from uh, Nugget and Rory Best. Uh, yeah, I mean, the darts is the hard thing. There's, and uh, in thinking in actual darts, uh, there's a pretty bit, bit of a darts tournament going on downstairs in the team room, isn't there, this, this Six Nations? There's a few hustlers downstairs, I think. I think yeah. Jordan Larmer is he, yeah, on that he'd never even seen a dartboard before. Now he's hitting treble twenties for for fun. He's in, <laughs> he's improving by the day. Yeah, Paul Dean brought the dartboard in just so lads could kind of switch off around the team room because generally when you're in there, you're either doing analysis or getting treatment. So um, yeah, it's nice for lads to be able to switch off and, and play that have a bit of crack. We've seen him as well. Table tennis is a big feature as well. That gets pretty uh, raucous at times, doesn't it? Yeah, like it's also just a, a, a nice um, a facility for us to be able to switch off there. Um, some of the, the problem is at times when the games can get a bit heated and competitive you're, you're sweating before you actually do a, a rugby session or, or a weight session so uh, you have to be careful how much uh, energy you, expe- you expend on it um, Just on that I mean, and it goes back to the whole rest and relaxation side of things you, you do have to be very careful don't you in terms of ensuring that you're ready and primed you've had this huge week and you've spoken about how hard it was to, to come down from that high and now you've got to get switched on straight away and, and prepare for Italy it's it's a, another big game this weekend in Aviva Stadium yeah well you know we're, we're got the got great facilities here um, got the use of the pool and the gym and and uh, like I was saying every person has their own room so it's you know perfect for getting your your recovery done and um, you know guys that played a lot of minutes over the weekend were, were looked after this morning they weren't doing weights they were just doing a bit of rehab and we were in the gym and a, a bit of fitness so it's just about Managing the group uh, as best the, the the coaching staff can, and just getting lads' bodies right to, like you said, go again. Um, you know, two week block with with France and Italy, so we got a huge game against Italy at home. So uh, yeah, it's going to be big weeks prep for us. Well, look, we know you've got a lot of work to do, so thank you very much for joining us, Sean Cronin, Fergus McFadden in the chair. Cheers.